Good morning, Bible class students. Today is a beautiful day that the Lord has made, and here we are on lesson 83, our final stretch of lessons this year. It kind of reminds me of traveling on an airplane. Now, you guys know from watching my videos that I don't like to fly, but I do it anyway. And I always said, I need to be an airline stewardess to overcome that crazy fear of flying. I get anxious just going to the airport. But when it's time to begin landing, I'm always so happy that we are almost done. Yet, if you've ever flown, you know that the most dangerous part of flying is actually the landing. And statistics say that nearly half of all fatal accidents occur during this last fraction of a flight. It's kind of scary because we've learned so much this year. God has taught us many things and we need to remember the valuable tools in his word that has given us the ability to reach beyond the pull of this world into kingdom concepts that equip us for great things. Now, we started on the runway in September and we flew above the clouds through Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and now Colossians. And over the past several months, but as we begin to get in that landing mode, don't forget, don't forget. Some of our lessons have been pretty repetitive. If you notice, Paul goes over and over a lot of the same type of things. and. I think that he understood one thing, that repetition is the key to remembering. In fact, if you are taking a test, what do you do? You go back over and over the same old concepts until you've got it. And he knew that we needed repetition in the Word of God. So our lessons are available to review. If you ever wanna go back through the summer, you're welcome to go back and watch it again. But today, if you haven't scored, take a few moments, get in God's presence, and let's get into his word together. It's almost summer, y'all. It's an exciting time, and I'm loving this word of God. I want us to hold it precious, and we're gonna pray this morning that God would cause us to remember. Let's pray this morning. Jesus, we love you, and we thank you for the word that you have spoken into our lives throughout this year. And I pray that at the end of this year, the very last few lessons that we will not go into autopilot, but that we will truly take to heart the things that your word is teaching us. And Lord, that we will remember the things that we have learned, the things you've spoken to us each individually this year, that we will not forget them, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for your word this morning. And we speak the name of Jesus over every classroom and student today, every stu parent and teacher. And God, we just ask that the Holy Ghost will move in a powerful way in our homes, in our schools, in the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 7 today. We've been talking about rising above. I shared my testimony in our last lesson, some things that God helped me to overcome, my personal testimony, and I, I pray that really inspired you. But today, this is almost like a part two to what our last lesson was. So verse five says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, consumptuous, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. How many of you know that the gospel changes us? It awakens us and that it empowers us. But only we can destroy the works of our natural tendency towards sin. It's in all of us, we've talked about that. It's imperative that we destroy sin in our life because if we don't destroy it, it will destroy us. And what Paul is saying here, he begins with outward sins and then moves into an inward sin of the heart. And you know, it's not a one-time thing or an instant process, destroying or mortifying or killing off the works of sin in our own personal life. Think about your bedroom. 
your space. How many of you keep your room spotless, immaculate order? Go ahead and raise your hand. <laughs> when it's clean, you know where everything is. There is not only order to your room, but it even seems to bring order to your mind and your attitude. This is an important concept because God is a God of order, not confusion. I'm not a naturally OCD person, and I've noticed the difference in my own self when my house or the things around me have an order to it, when my day has more of an order to it. But have you noticed one thing? Dirt doesn't surrender easy. <laughs> speck by speck, the dust returns. Piece by piece, the clutter piles up. Sin is like the dust and clutter in our house. I want to eliminate all of it with one prayer of repentance, but sin doesn't surrender that easily. Thought by thought, bad attitudes return. Choice by choice, unpleasant consequences begin to pile up. When Paul said to mortify sin, he knew that it must continually be dealt with. Every single day, we need to do a spirit check. What am I entertaining myself with? Who are my influencers? What am I allowing? Where does Jesus fit in? How am I prioritizing the word of God and worship? The best eraser in the world is an honest confession to God. Now, I've told my kids for years to keep the bathroom company ready. That's our, our little saying here. This means that when you leave it, turn around and look and do a check and make sure that it's straightened up as if company were coming. And that's what we need to do every single day. We need to do a spirit check. But sin is an avalanche. And we're gonna end our lesson with an interesting video, an analogy of how a little bit of sin can do a whole lot of destruction. Lenin Peak is located on the border of Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. And in case you couldn't tell from the name, has origins that date back to Soviet times. Lenin Peak is a popular destination for serious mountain climbers since it's 23,406 feet tall. It's the most popular mountain to climb in that height range because it's not considered to be very technical. But while it may not be a technical climb, there is always the risk of an avalanche. And the people in this video got a big reminder of that fact. What starts off as a small tumble quickly escalates into a full-on avalanche headed straight for the people below. The Bible says that he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Sin is also described as simply missing the mark. We have a tendency to categorize sin. That's a, a little sin. That's a big sin. That's, um, you know, but sin is sin. And when it is left unharnessed in our life, it can be devastating to both us and those around us. Even in our own life, if we're not careful, the things that we allow, the things that we let go unharnessed, our attitudes or our appetites, they can take over everything around us and be detrimental to both our walk with God and our relationships with other people. Do a heart check and find out every day. God, let us see the things inside and help us to put those things to death. God bless. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And remember that sin is like an avalanche. Located in the southwestern part of Washington State is Mount Rainier. Not only is this mountain the tallest in the state, but it is also an active stratovolcano. Video shot all the way back in 1973 captured many massive avalanches on this mountain. There isn't a ton of information online as to whether or not these were controlled, but they sure packed a serious punch, tearing through trees as they cascaded down the mountain. 